All right, so kind of continuing on my little refocusing um, genre here. I'm too cheap to pay for some of the other refocusing devices. And a buddy of mine actually sent me a tutorial. I already talked, spoke to you guys earlier about how you can turn these Butler Creek um, scope caps into uh, simple flip covers for your... P this is a Mod 3 Bravo, by the way. It's uh, essentially, it's just you can turn it into two PVS 14s or a bridge dual tube night vision. It's kind of irrelevant. Basically, it's a PVS 14 uses the same glass. So PVS 14, whatever other, you know, uh, 18s or anything else really that uses 30 millimeter tubes, this will be applicable for. Anyway, I will link the products just in uh, the description of this video. You can just grab them on Amazon, which is a really nice change. But um, essentially I already have the Butler Creeks with a small hole drilled in them uh, that I was using for refocus, which is awesome. But sometimes you want more, sometimes you want less refocus. Plus, also, um, PVS-14 glass is uh, not cheap. And I wanted a way to protect the glass while also maintaining refocus. So, what I did is um, I went on the Night Vision Reddit, and I was asking people about buying some of the refocusing devices that are on the market. Uh, all of them pretty much range from 120 to, I kid you not, $250 a piece. And someone basically just wrote me up a tutorial real quick on how to do this. So... I went on to got a 30 millimeter iris device. They use these on cameras and a traditional mil spec PVS 14. Um, they just use them as the front caps with the sacrificial lens on it. This is mil spec, non reflective, um, pretty strong glass. And it's cheap because it's mil spec, so, or it's a uh, surplus. So, really, all you have to do is um, again, I'm going to take this out and clean it in a moment. But so you have your scope caps and I'll get back to this, but you uh, electrical tape to your, the outside of your PVS 14 to add a little bit of width to make your lens sit on there thick. And um, honestly, if I'll, to be quite frank, I would recommend even more than just using the scope cover itself because you're gonna have less surface area. So I really like to add a good, decent amount. And if you stretch it, it'll look really nice and you'll barely even notice it's there even if you take the scope cover off. So anyway, all right, so we've got some electrical tape here, blah, blah, blah. Let's keep going. And the only reason for that is, is this is just a rubber friction fit. So having more there, see, makes it a much more secure, speaking of, <laughs> device. So anyway, so the sacrificial lens will just drop in here. And yes, it wiggles around, but when it's smushed, together we're not gonna have that issue uh, and the reason i'm dropping this in um so first of all there's two sides to these irises that i linked uh, one kind of has this open metal um weird looking side and they has this smooth side i recommend leaving the metal on the outside uh, so that way what's actually touching your um, night vision device is going to be this nice smooth metal uh, and although you know it doesn't really matter um, but that's what i do um, so you're going to pick where you're going to actually want your um, device to be actuated um, so my lever is on this side, so fuck it, I'll, uh, I'm on it on the opposite side. So it's still, you know, protected slightly. So all I'm going to do is kind of put this in here. I'm going to kind of eyeball it. So, uh, in these, inside the scope ring itself, you can see there's, you know, all this, there's a lip here. So we just want to figure out where that lip is. And I kind of just eyeball it. You could obviously do like, you know, measurements and such, but... You know, as with every great idea, it starts with Amazon parts and Dremel. So, um, keeping the theme, I'm not measuring shit. Um, so, you know, what I'm using is just a simple cutting wheel. And all you're going to do is I'm going to kind of find where I want to start, start it at. And I'm going to make my first cut. Trying to keep an idea of where it is. There we go. So remember, leave a little bit of room for the glass. And then you're going to start to have to kind of feel where you're at, how much more you need to cut, where you need to go. And as we, obviously, you can just drop it in and see kind of where you're at. So here I know I am here. And you want to leave a little bit room on each side so that way you don't actually bottom out. So 
Again, you can simply clean this up later with a little bit of sandpaper. I actually prefer to use a uh, sharp knife, like a really sharp knife, but honestly, it cleans up pretty easily just with your finger. And again, I'm gonna take the glass, sacrificial lens, pop it in, and then I'm just trying to see where I'm at here. I just need a tad bit more. Again, you can always cut more later, but you can't cut less, so. If anyone actually took the time to grab calipers and like figure out the measurements and such, you can post that below and help people that actually give a shit. Um, but these are like literally $10 scope rings. So my theory was if I broke it, I'll just return it on Amazon. I mean, not do that. But. Anyway, so uh, let's see here. Still just need a bit more. And so the goal here is that you can see the edges of the, this is actually what's going to uh, actuate the device. So you want to make sure that you you're, can see both the edges clearly so that way you never bottom out on each side. And fun fact, the length of this little excerpt is going to be the uh, length it took me to make it. So, what is this, a 10 minute process to save you $250 from buying these other irises? Probably worth it. Alrighty. Okay, I'm good. I just want to clean it up a bit. And then I won't bore you with actually cleaning up these holes. You just use a little bit of sandpaper or a sharp knife. But all we're going to do, put them here. And as you can see here, um, you can't really fully see all of it yet. So I'm going to come back just a wee bit and widen up the gap. And it doesn't really matter if the gap's too wide as long as the metal of the iris is still touching. You'll still have. It will still be airtight. So you can see there is the full length of the actuation um, without any interference of the actual plastic and you still just see metal so that way it'll be airtight when you actually go to utilize it. Um, so one of the other things is, whoa, um, it comes with this little itty, itty bitty metal dingus, a nice little tip is if you have an aluminum black you can turn it black it is just simply aluminum huh. I don't know I guess it's too 
guess it's steel. Crap. My other one, so I have two of these. My other one was aluminum. It turned instantaneously black. So I guess the second one is steel. So it looks like they're coming from different manufacturers in the Chinas. But yeah, I'm just gonna get a little bit of thread locker and I'm going to put it on just a dibbly dab. And then I'm gonna let it sit a minute here while I prepare this. So from this point on, it's gonna be nearly impossible, obviously, to clean the lens without actually removing this device. So I'm going to nicely clean the lens with my disgusting microfiber here and get all the fingerprints off from this. Um, this is actually, it's called cat crap. Um, what it does is it makes it one much easier to clean the lens uh, because it kind of adds like a little bit of filament on the end. But what it does is it prevents uh, fogging and condensation from building on it. It's kind of like Rain-X. But it's actually specially designed for like camera lenses and such. Um, so I use it on all my scopes and optics and it's really, really nice for uh, your maintenance routine of your night vision because it does prevent that um, fogging. And uh, especially if you're using night vision at night, there's condensation and uh, condensation that will build on your night vision devices, especially if they're up on your helmet. So this just kind of makes it beat off. So, sorry, I know this is kind of a impromptu video, but I really, really love this because it saved me a significant amount of money. Here we go, I just put more fingerprints on the outside of this. <laughs> All right, and you are gonna need a exceedingly tiny Phillips to, or not, not flathead to tighten this. And I do highly, highly, highly recommend you use uh, Vibratite or Loctite or some of that delicious, no Lucy stuffy because there are reports of these coming off. I'm gonna get it nice and snug and simply put it onto my device. <laughs> As you can see, it's extremely snug and all that shaking that the sacrificial lens has due to the, just the friction uh, is no longer there. And as you can see, fully operational iris. Let me wipe my fingerprints off. and fully operational, has a sacrificial lens on it, and it cost about 50 bucks each.